Hey guys, welcome in. Today we're going to be taking a look at the build of Joshua Bardwell's 5-inch drone kit. I wanted to make sure to make this video uh, for all the beginners out there. I myself was a beginner when I built this drone for the first time. Uh, I've never built a drone before and I was pretty intimidated and didn't know what to expect. So hopefully this will try to calm the nerves of some of you that want to get into FPV drone flying but might be intimidated by the task of building the drone. Uh, and I'll go over throughout the video some of my struggles, what I was thinking, and if I ran into any roadblocks and how I overcame those roadblocks, uh, hopefully help you guys decide if you want to pick this up or not. I will say, spoiler alert, this thing does fly. It flies well, and I've had a blast with it. Now, if Oklahoma could uh, hurry up and warm up so I can spend more time outside flying and less time in the sim, that'd be great. But I hope you guys like it. So I start off just by showing off the uh, Joshua Bardwell box here, which includes majority of the parts from the kit and a couple of spare parts I've ordered uh, based on the recommendations from Joshua Bardwell's listing page. Uh, I, just, I did decide to go with the full DJI setup to make my first drone build uh, hopefully a little bit easier, and it was. Uh, as you can see there, I've shown you the 04 air unit and the 03 air unit. Uh, rude awakening to DJI's uh, naming schemes. So the 04 air unit is technically a light version now. Uh, it's a mess. Just make sure you pay attention and do some research before you start ordering parts. Uh, this is me beginning to assemble the uh, the main frame, I guess you can call it, the chassis. Uh, watching Joshua's build video up in the top right there on the iPad. But uh, everything was packaged very well and uh, the screws were all wrapped individually as they need to be installed. So. I really didn't struggle too much here at the beginning, and this was, believe it or not, more relaxing than anything. Uh, I believe we call these the stack screws, if I'm not mistaken, and that's where a lot of your electronics will, will slide on, and uh, you create what they call the, the stack. I will say the mechanism they've engineered to hold in these arms is uh, is quite a treat. It's, it's a very interesting pinch or squeeze setup they have and it's it's just something you got to uh witness and see for yourself in person to to actually appreciate the engineering behind it it's very very clever what they've done here So this is just me unwrapping uh, each of the individual motors here and uh, setting them out, getting ready to mount them on the quad itself. So really important here, I don't know if you can see his video on the top right, but he he's, talks about the, the motor screws and how to check these motor screws to make sure they're not too long. Uh, and, and what's cool is this, he doesn't give this advice for this quad specifically. He knows that the screws that he sent for this quad will work, um, but he's even given you advice for future builds. You know, check these screws, make sure it doesn't get into the coil windings. And I, I think that's, that's, that's really cool.
So here's where we're actually unwrapping the uh, ESC in the, the flight controller. I hope I'm using the correct terminology. I'm still pretty new to this, but uh, we're getting ready to get into the fun part of uh, starting to assemble the stack and then some soldering. take and I don't necessarily recommend this just the way I did it is you can take a lighter heat up the end of the wire until it turns just a little bit of a gray color you'll see it start to melt and use your fingernails and uh, just pull that wire strip it back it seemed to work very well So this is where the soldering begins. Uh, close your eyes if if you're like a soldering guru or really good at soldering, because this I, I, it was awful, uh, but it worked. <laughs> I'm just gonna let this play out. Um, oh, get a soldering iron that uh, you can adjust the the temp with. Don't don't use what I'm using. Came from Home Depot. It's garbage. It sucks. I wish I could adjust the temperature. Uh, I, I believe it was just way too hot. Oh, it was at that time I realized my uh, multimeter's batteries were dead, so that was cool. Uh, during one of these cuts, I, I went to the store and got a new battery for the multimeter. So this was the uh, part I was the most concerned and nervous about was getting these leads soldered onto the ESC. Uh, here I'm just filling the cup for the uh, plug adapter and this was fairly straightforward. Uh, you can see I'm using my helping hand here. That was a lifesaver. Uh, number one, it, it saves you from burning your fingers. Number two, it just helps hold everything in place. So I highly suggest it doesn't have to be one as, as, as big as this, but I do suggest having some sort of helping hand. So before we move on to actually soldering these wires onto the ESC itself, I will let you know this is the part I struggled with the most. Um, and this did take probably about 20 minutes of just fiddling around, moving solder around to get it to melt right. I don't know, I'm sure it has a lot to do with my inexperience of soldering, but uh, it may also have something to do with the tip I was using. Uh, I was using a really small tip and I feel like maybe a, a larger or wider tip if I could heat up more of the uh, pads would have been uh, beneficial here.
So yeah, simple as that. <laughs> They're soldered. Uh, no, so I did struggle there a little bit, but this is me using a multimeter to uh, verify there's no shorts. And uh, Joshua also does a very good job of showing you uh, how this is pinned out and wh where to check and what to do here. And uh, once everything came back good, I was a little bit more confident on powering this guy up. Um, and I believe I do the, that here in a moment. I did not have a smoke checker. I tried to order one and they were on back order. So uh, I did the best I could with what I had, which is a multimeter. And uh, I had no issues with the powering up. Uh, so no smoke. So that's good. Um, I don't know if I mentioned in uh, or beforehand, but I did decide to go with the O3 air unit as that was uh, what the build called for, right? So this build was designed to work with the O3 air unit. So that's what I went with. And we actually hung on to the O4 air unit for a future build. And I believe here we're uh, unboxing the goggles. We're getting ready to go over to the computer and uh, activate the, the O3 air units and update it. Same with the goggles. And I also went with the DJI controller. So this is just me plugging in and activating and updating all the DJI components pretty straightforward and simple process once again Joshua does a great job walking you through this entire process even some troubleshooting uh, steps if you have issues doing this so this is the k2 air battery charger that was also recommended uh, this is me just unboxing it and uh, putting on the screen protector that's included with it and this thing has been phenomenal thus far. I've had no issues with it. It's Bluetooth capable. I can stop it from my phone. I can monitor from my phone. It's great if I'm in the house doing other things. I can still monitor my batteries as they're charging. And that's just me charging up a couple of batteries here, getting ready for uh, test flights. I don't know what happened to the video here. I think the GoPro might have started overheating, but uh, obviously you can see the frame rate has changed. So videos are getting close to being done. So uh, bear with us here. I think the craziest part and the most rigorous part of this build is the soldering part. Uh, I know we're getting ready to solder the capacitor and uh, he talks he, he talks about that as the final boss or, or the monster coming back at the end, uh, which is a great analogy, right? Is, is you're so close, you're like, oh crap, wait, we gotta solder on the capacitor. And uh, believe it or not, this wasn't too difficult for me. I don't think I struggled too bad with that. Um, that might have something to do with the globs of solder I had on uh, the ESC <laughs> that I could simply just sink the capacitor wires down into. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I, it played out in my favor. Uh, I'll take a W when I can get it. Yeah, I believe this is me just doing some cable management, buttoning some things up, and uh, I got chipped away at a couple little pieces of solder there with my flush cuts, and uh, it's me putting the hood on, you would call it that, or the top on it, and uh, verifying everything is 
screwed down and tight. Gonna go on once over on the quad itself. Uh, putting the, the sticky on for the battery. Then we do some Velcro. And I believe the last thing that I put on are the props. And I believe I put these in the wrong order at first. So please ignore that if you see it. I caught it before the first test flight. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I guess I will see you guys when this thing's in the air.